Hi everybody, my name is Alex from alexpleasehelp.com. I'm going to show you a complicated logarithm problem that uh, I stumbled across. I want to show it to you because A, it's kind of nifty, and B, I have never seen this anywhere on the internet before. As far as I know, I came up with it. I'm not going to say that's the case for sure because I just never seen it so it might be out there somewhere if anybody finds it let me know here it is the problem given the functions f and g find a positive real number greater than one such that the functions f and g intersect at exactly one point now the trick here is to find the exact value, not the decimal value. So there's no cheating using numerical methods. The functions are f of x equals a to the x, it's an exponential. g of x equals the logarithm at base a of x. This is a logarithmic function, not any old random base logarithm. This is a base a. This is an exponential with a. This is a logarith logarithm with a. In order to graph this, um, to show you what they look like, I'm going to have to show you the altered g using the change of base formula, where you have uh, an arbitrary base a. G, uh, you can rewrite the function as a logarithm at x divided by the logarithm of a using any other base. In this case, I ha the way I have it written is the natural logarithm, where it's base e. This is the only way you'll be able to do calculations or graph them by hand. Uh, your graphing calculator might have a button on there for an arbitrary base, but um, most don't. But anyway, here's the effect. We want to have these two functions intersect at exactly one point. We need to find a so that they do that they're going to intersect right around in here. The base that I have this graphed at is 1.5. If you increase it to 2, you can see they spread out even more, so it needs to be less than that. So I'm going to bump it down to 1.4. And you can see right away that they al it already intersects at 2 points. So it's in between 1.4 and 1.5. I can go a little bit closer to 1.5 and oh it's almost there but that's not quite it and if you zoom in you can see that it'll actually intersect it at um, two locations but the way this graph is it's kind of crude if you notice the way the f, f and g are written they are inverses of each other this should be a hint as to uh, how to solve this problem and for a little bit more clear picture of these functions I'm going to show you what they look like in a program called GeoGebra uh, it, It's a much easier program to show functions in I have a little slider here that changes the base of the base of the two functions f and g When you bump it all the way to 2 you can see how they're really far, really far spread And you decrease it a little bit and they get closer a little more get even more closer eventually they'll get right on top of each other and boom it's about 1.44 ish but that doesn't count in order to solve this problem properly you have to get the exact value no decimals only symbolically or with or with integers or uh, radicals with whole numbers anyway I'm gonna go through the steps here but right about now would be a time to stop or pause the video and solve it on your own you have the two functions f and g I'm gonna give you another hint and that is that where they intersect at this one single point their derivatives are both equal and they're both equal to one they are inverses of each other so they will reflect about the line y equals x. So that means their derivative is going to be equal if they intersect at that one point. So if their derivatives are both equal to 1, differentiate them. The derivative of f with respect to x is a to the x times the natural logarithm of a. It has to be the natural logarithm of a. And that equals 1. 
the derivative of g with respect to x is 1 divided by the product of x and the natural logarithm of a. And that equals 1 as well. Since they both equal 1, that means that a to the x times the natural log of a equals 1 over x times the natural log of a. And remember from the beginning, f and g intersect, which means they are equal to each other. a to the x equals the natural log of x divided by the natural log of y. And you can see why I chose natural log at, for the change of base function, because the derivatives pop out a natural log, which makes the solving a little easier. You have two equations and two unknowns. Recall from the previous page, their originals, the original f and g equal each other, and then the derivatives equal each other. The first step, since you have two equations and two unknowns, you rewrite the first one or you don't have to rewrite it since this is an a to the x and this is this one has an a to the x you just substitute log of x over log of a into here and this is what it'll look like log of x over log of a times log of a equals 1 over x times the log of a these two logs will cancel leaving you with log of x equals 1 over x log of a you can rewrite it you can uh, Oops. You can move the x over to the left side. So you got x log of x equals 1 over log of a. And then using the reverse logarithm rules, which I'm just going to assume that you'll know what this step is, we can rewrite the left side as the logarithm of x to the x power. Exponents inside a logarithm pop down as coefficients. But this is the step in reverse. Okay, seeing that, we can raise both sides. We can take e as a base of both sides. e to the log of x to the x equals e to the 1 over log of a. This e and this natural log will cancel, leaving on the left side just x to the x. So, so far, we have all the x's on the left and all the a's on the right. The easiest way to solve this, if you try e as a value of x, you can rewrite it as e to the e equals e to the 1 over the natural log of a. If this is true, that means that e equals 1 over log of a, because these two exponents must be the same if they have the same base. So given that, all you have now is a. It's the only unknown in the equation. So rewrite it put log of a on the left and e on the bottom right, raise both sides to a base of e, e to the log of a equals e to the 1 over e, a equals e to the 1 over e. This is the solution. And if you're curious what the decimal value is, it's approximately 1.4446678610097661. Not that that matters, but if you go to back, if you go back to the graph, you can see that it's about 1.46 ish. The value of a, which is the base. So, when we solved this, we had to plug in the value of, of x in order to solve it. The value of x was e. Notice right here where they intersect, that x value is e. It's also the y value back over to the uh, problem, I'm going to show you how this checks. I'm a big proponent of checking your work to show that um, you've gotten the right answer. So we found, i got to hurry up here, I'm almost over 10 minutes, a equals e to the 1 over e. In case you were wondering, that's the e to the reciprocal of e. It required x equals e. The original functions came out to be like this. You plug e in as your value of x, e to the 1 over e to the e, and that's your value of a in there as well. e over e turns into 1, e to the first power is e. Logarithm of x, logarithm of a, log of e turns into 1, 1 over e pops out as a coefficient, log of e equals 1, the reciprocal of 1 over e is equal to e. So these, so these check, they're equal to each other because they intersected. Then their derivatives same thing. 
bring it in, plug in e, e to the 1 over e to the e, log of 1 over e, or log of e to the 1 over e. Simplify from earlier, all this equaled 1, log of e equals 1. So that one equals 1. You plug e and a in, you get e times the log of e to the 1 over e, the 1 over e comes down as a coefficient, that cancels the first e, the log of e equals 1. Those check. Ta-da! That's all the time I have for this video. I think I'm run over. Check out my website and my YouTube channel for more math and physics problems. You can submit your problems to me at alexplacehelp.com slash online slash submit.